Welcome to DS106. This is Dr. Oblivion. It's a pleasure to have you here in DS106. And I don't know how much you know about this course or don't know about this course, but I'm going to take the time in this introductory video to introduce you to the course, to some of the major concepts of the course, and also to some of the readings and assignments you will have to do immediately. What is digital storytelling? Well, the course has been taught here several times, and it is a course that is dedicated to the interrogation of the media landscape as it surrounds us. It is fitting that this is an entirely online course, because digital storytelling as we know it, has evolved in some fascinating ways. Evolved in ways that I don't think we really understand what the medium is and what it means. So part of what this course will do, part of what we will set out to do, is to interrogate the media landscape. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I am coming to you only via TV. I cannot be seen in real life. I cannot be approached in real life. Dr. Oblivion will be teaching this class through the TV. Now if you do have immediate questions about the class, if you do have any issues, if you do have technical problems, if you want feedback, my teaching assistant, Jim Groom, will be able to assist you in whatever you might need. You should have his email address at this point, and as I understand it, you should all be set up with your own domain, your own blog, and a whole series of services, whether it be Twitter, Flickr, YouTube, and of course, your own domain and your own WordPress blog. Now, for those of you who are taking this for credit, you're in a particular situation where over the next five weeks you'll be obligated to complete a certain amount of assignments on a wide range of topics. We'll talk about those topics and why we chose those topics in a moment. But I want you who are taking it for credit to keep in mind, at the same time you'll be working on this class for credit over the next five weeks, there will be as many as 40 other students who are taking this class in an open online environment and doing the assignments as they see fit. They are under no obligation to do any of the assignments. They can do one assignment and be done. They can do all the assignments. That's up to them. They paste themselves and they go about them. They choose what assignments they want to do. They choose the order they want to do them. They have complete freedom. Now there's a certain amount of freedom in this class for everybody, as you'll find out soon enough. At the same time, the open and online students' work will be syndicating alongside the credit student work. So what, one of the challenges you, as either a credit or as a non-credit student, will face immediately is keeping up with the flow of information as it comes in and is syndicated in to the DS106.us site. Now, there are several recommendations I can make for that. But one of the things I want you to keep in mind as online students is that the key to success in DS-106, the single most important part of DS-106, is the conversation and the discourse around the work all of your classmates will do, whether they be open or for credit students. The distinction in my mind is immaterial. Now, what I will ask of you and what I will impart to you at every juncture of this class is that reading and commenting upon the work of your peers is essential to your success in DS-106. And there are a couple of ways to monitor that work. This does not mean you have to comment on everything. This is, does not mean you have to even read everything. What this means is that regularly you need to be reading and substantively commenting on other people's work, right? I will obligate you 
to this. This, in my mind, is a pillar of what DS-106 is. It's a community for sharing and for commenting upon one another's work as a means to understand what it means to create out in the open. Now, I've already mentioned this idea of creation, so let me focus on that and what it means to DS-106 in some more detail. DS-106, as I understand it, is not necessarily a traditional course about research, about documents, even to the same degree about reading books. In fact, DS-106 is very much focused on both the conception of and the execution of a work, a creative work often. In fact, DS-106 is dedicated over the next five weeks to getting you, as students, into the creative habit, regularly creating through a series of media. It is my understanding that in higher education more generally, or academia, there's no shortage of essays. There's no shortage of literature reviews. There's no shortage of lab reports. I understand it's a crucial part of how we've conceptualized higher education. And I am here neither to argue that point nor to pretend it doesn't exist. On the other hand, DS-106 will not necessarily fall in line with that way of going about articulating yourself. In fact, DS-106 will start to push you to explore a series of other media, whether that, whether that be photography and visual, through design, through audio, through video, through the mashup, and also through fan fiction. So there will be writing along the way. You will be talking about your process of creation. You will be sharing that out regularly. At the same time, you will be expected on a regular basis to create a series of works. Now there's a series of assignments on the DS-106 site. If you have not made yourself familiar with the DS-106 site yet, I highly recommend you do that. DS-106 as a site really opens up the question of you in many ways helping to program the course. As you see in the DS-106 site, and the address for that is ds106.us, and I will put that up on the screen right now, if you give me one second. Uh, DS, yes, here it is. ds106.us is the site that we will be using, not only to syndicate all your individual blogs, and you have set them up by now, I understand, and once you do that, you then will be able to go to that site to follow and to read the work of others. Now, at the top of that site in the menu bar, there's a little button that says Submit an Assignment. If you click on that button, you'll see a series of categories, whether it be video, audio, design, visual, fan fiction, mashup, etc. All of these different categories you can click on and you can see a wide range of assignments that other people have submitted. And along the submissions, if you click on a particular assignment that interests you, you'll see a series of assignments that other people have done. This is an assignment bank that was created in large part by the folks who took DS-106 last semester. We will be using this assignment bank for each of the different media we cover over the next five weeks for you to create your assignments. You will have great liberty in choosing which assignments you want to do, but you will be required to do a certain amount every week. Now, as far as the blogging goes, I will expect you to be regularly blogging your reflections on the readings we do, on the work. Everything that you create for this class needs to be blogged, and your process in creating it needs to be discussed. That's an elemental, fundamental requirement of DS-106. The work you do should not stand outside of a context. You should contextualize how you did something, how you went about the process, 
And that may be a long, drawn-out explanation, or it might be a rather A, B, C, D. I'll leave that up to you. At the same time, while you're creating and blogging your process, you also need to be following, reading, and commenting on the works of others. You'll notice that what we have here is a distributed community whereby you're both creating and commenting. What we're trying to build is a virtuous circle of feedback from creation. Create and feedback, create and feedback, and hopefully share how you did something so someone else in the community can learn from it. There'll be no one central node in this class. In many ways, the DS106 site is purely an aggregation site from all your individual sites. What I recommend, at least immediately, because the blog posts are already coming in, is that you subscribe to the Daily Digest that is on the DS106 site. You'll see it in the sidebar. You just go there and you subscribe via email. And every day, you will get an email with all the different assignments that have been submitted that day. This is one of the ways, at least, at least initially, to get you up and running. Shortly, I believe tomorrow, we will talk in more depth about RSS and about subscribing both to the DS106 site, but also to a series of sites that may be interest, whether it be individuals in this class or different sites about video, media, audio, visual, design, etc. Now, that kind of is a basic introduction to the DS106 site. I am assuming that all of you have now a profile and all of you have an avatar. The avatar is going to be a very, very important element to this class. And you'll soon see that Twitter will be a crucial way for you to communicate with Jim Groom, who in turn will communicate with me. What the avatar represents, particularly in an online class, where in many ways you will emerge as a person in this class, not through how we see you, not through your physical apparition in a space, but rather through your virtual creation of an identity. And you must think long and hard about what it is that you want other people to think and reflect upon when they see your work. You won't have the initial face-to-face -face first impression. The impression will be an ongoing, fragmented impression developed through a series of assignments and interactions with others. In my mind, this is the foundation for building what we have termed a digital identity. The digital identity will be crucial to your experimentation in this class. At the same time, you'll note more and more through this media. Even just look on the, on the front page of DS106, look on Twitter, where have you? The visual representation of your work is often associated with something called an avatar. An avatar, in many ways, is how I will recognize your work or your tweets. How I will visually be able to decipher what you've done from thousands of others who I often follow. Keep that in mind. That avatar may seem almost quotidian, trivial, but it is not. In many ways, it's how I am going to visualize you as I read your work. I will never see any of you face to face. That will never happen. I have not seen anyone face to face for 27 years. Now, you may see Jim, you may see, you may see Jim Groom. And he may be our go-between for anything you may need. But at the same time, I will only see your trace on the web, the trace of your work, the trace of the things you have done, the trace in many ways of who you want to be on the internet. And this question is one we will return to on a regular basis. This idea of you regularly framing your identity through a series of services online. And what you'll quickly realize by the end of this five weeks, this very intensive five weeks, I might add, is that you have 
through this, if you haven't already, started to create an identity that when people search for you, you will have some control over. And that's a nice segue into the assignments for tonight and some of the larger thinking behind DS-106 as a class and a conceptual framework. This idea of empowerment, it's a slippery slope, the idea of empowerment. And I don't want to pretend by getting online or getting a blog you're necessarily empowered. That would be a very simple take on a quite complex problem. But what I do want you to think about is that information out there about you is being created. And who creates it and how it's manipulated and how others see it is not completely out of your control. Hence my insistence through Jim Groom, of course, for you to get your own web hosting account, for you to get your own domain, for you in many ways to learn even if it's trial by fire, as I'm sure it was with many of you, and you may be cursing the good name of Dr. Brian Oblivion right now. At the same time, this is a very important step to you at least realizing, if not continuing on with, the fact that managing your own data, that controlling your own data, that controlling your namespace online, Think of it as your address in the internet. is not nearly as difficult as you might have thought five days ago before you set up your own spaces. Now what's more is this data, while not completely free of corporate interests, is on a database that through cPanel you can get and you can download and you can save or erase, or erase the traces of, at least on that server. How easy would it be for you to erase all of that information on a third party server like Facebook, or even Twitter, which we are using in this class? This is a question you need to think about. This idea of your data, who owns it, and how portable it is. Can you take it with you when you go? What's more, and this gets to the first reading for tonight, is what does it mean for you, in many ways, to be managing, to be, to quote Gardner Campbell, whose essay, The Personal Cyber Infrastructure, you will read tonight, the sysadmin of your own education. Using this GUI interface known as cPanel, as a space whereby you can create not only a WordPress blog, but a full-blown CMS, right? a discussion board, if you like, an e-commerce e site, if you like. This is a space through open source tools and a LAMP web environment, LAMP standing for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, Perl, or Python, but usually it's PHP, you don't need to know what all of those necessarily do in a specific, well, you should know what they do. But at the same time, a LAMP environment are four elements, we'll talk about this in more depth, open source elements, well, MySQL used to be open source, and it still is, but it's owned by Oracle, which is a question, but the Linux, the open source operating system, Apache, the open source web server software, MySQL, what was an open source database, and PHP, which is open source scripting language. These four elements go to create the web host, which you are creating your work on, this LAMP environment. And I'll have more details about that in a post which will follow. This LAMP environment, in many ways, gives you access to open source applications. Once you have your own server space, you can then install your own applications, whether that be WordPress, as you all have, Drupal, which is another blogging CMS engine, um, Typo3, uh, e-commerce sites, 
uh, discussion boards, as I said. All of these can be installed. And what this class wants you to think about, and think about hard, is that the internet and your space on it is something that's within your control. It's something that you can experiment with. Think of it as a sandbox whereby you control your namespace and the work you've done, your portfolio, your resume, however you want to imagine that space online, and one that you can take with you as you go. DS-106, in its most idealistic, would be a space whereby every student who came to this fine university started to build and create their own web presence that they, that they cultivated, that they considered, that they critiqued, and that ultimately that work they've done became their digital archive of their experience here. And you take enough of those, and they're interactive and they're live. And what you have uncovered is a life of the mind at a university. This, in many ways, are the theoretical underpinnings of DS-106. It is as much about you thinking and taking ownership of the work you do for any given class as it is about narrating that work and thinking about narrative in these new media more generally. So Gardner Campbell's personal cyber infrastructure really sets the framework for this idea quite beautifully. It is a very short essay, and I will be linking to it in the corresponding post that will come out when this video is archived. So you can find a link of it there. I am also going to ask you to watch a 60-minute, or probably about a 45-minute video of Gardner Campbell speaking specifically to this essay and to this idea of the student, in many ways, as an admin of their own education. And I don't think this is limited to a student, per se. I think this goes for just about everybody, how they can and how easy it is to control, and what are some of the kind of unforeseen benefits? And what might it mean as we're moving into a landscape where so much of our personal data and so much of the work we've created is housed, controlled, and in many ways owned by third parties? It's a great question, and it's one that Gardner Campbell brings a certain poetic flourish to. So this personal cyber infrastructure, as well as his presentation on that, which he gave at the Open Education Conference in 2009, this is a talk that has been affectionately nicknamed Bags of Gold. And when you watch it, you will know why it's called Bags of Gold. It's a wonderful talk. So that's the first bit I will ask you for this evening, the first assignment. And there are many. There are three. So the first assignment will be reading Gardner Campbell's Personal Cyber Infrastructure, watching the video, and blogging about that, but you're going to be blogging about a few things. So the second one is there's a video of a Michael Wesch. Michael Wesch is an anthropologist at the University of Kansas, or Kansas State University, forgive me. And he's actually well known for a series of videos he did on the internet, which basically deal with the question of how media is changing the way we think, changing the way we teach, and changing the way we learn. His video that you'll be watching is actually an excellent video in many ways to set the stage for what DS-106 is an experiment in and about. So I'm also going to ask you to watch Michael Wesch's video. And as I said in the accompanying post to this video, there will be a link. Finally, and this is a big finally, you're going to have an ongoing series of assignments or ongoing assignment for the next two weeks. In some ways this is an introduction to DS-106, but we also have to hit the ground running because in a five-week class we only have so much time. The third assignment, besides the two readings, is something called the Daily Shoot. Now, if you would like to see the site, and I have it, and here's the title of Michael Wesch's talk, Knowledge Able, to knowledge, no, knowledgeable to knowledge able. And I think I also have the title of, yes, here is, in case you didn't get it, for, for Gardner Campbell, 
There's the personal cyber infrastructure. You can see it on the screen right there. What's that? What line? Gotcha. Excuse me. Technical difficulties. Keep in mind, though, whoever's talking to me cannot see me. I'm being mediated by the camera. Now, the final assignment, and this is one you will be doing every day. This includes weekends from today all the way until next, not till next Monday, but the following Monday, right? So the beginning of week three of this class. It's called The Daily Shoot. The Daily Shoot is a website. You can find the address below, dailyshoot.com. What The Daily Shoot is, it's an ingenious idea, and it's one that DS106 has experimented with before to some great effect. For many students, this is one of the, the best assignments they'll do all semester. And I think it's because you never know what the next assignment will be. What the daily shoot basically does is every day it gives you a new prompt for taking a picture. Take a picture where you highlight the color orange. Take a picture where you capture the diagonals. Take a picture of a brick. Whatever it may be, you will find that prompt on the dailyshoot.com site. You will take a picture that matches the prompt, interprets the prompt, plays with the prompt, challenges the prompt, whatever. But it will be a daily photo that you take on that day. This is not a photo that you've taken last year. It's not a friend's photo. It's a photo you took on that day and submitted and uploaded to Flickr. There's a specific way to tag that photo on Flickr. You will need to tag it with the tag DS106. You will need it to tag it with the specific daily shoot tag, which could be something like daily shoot is DS2, daily shoot, but it would be DS544 or DS498. Whatever the particular day is will have a unique tag. So keep that in mind. You will also finally tweet out every day your daily shoot. What, allows, what this allows you to do is your photo, once you put it on Flickr, and then you tweet to Daily Shoot, at Daily Shoot, here's my image. You put the Flickr URL in there, and then you tag it with the DS499 or whatever the tag is for that day. And I will give you an example of this in the post that will follow this video. And then you tag it DS106. That image will show up on the Daily Shoot site. And what's interesting as you get into that regular habit of taking a photo every day is that you'll find yourself checking the Daily Shoot site and also seeing what other people have done, both from this class but well beyond. And Daily Shoot is a very kind of excellent exercise in this regard because it allows you to not only do this as a regular assignment to get in the creative habit of taking a photo every day and of looking differently around about the world around you, but also about seeing what other people have done and learning from their style. There are some phenomenal photographers who do the daily shoot. Think of this as the opportunity to not only look at what they're doing, but to build on your own craft as a photographer. So the daily shoot will start today. You should go out, you should look what the assignment is on daily shoot, that's dailyshoot.com. You find it, and then you'll be tweeting your photo after you've uploaded it to Flickr. Now an important point about Flickr, which will be another mainstay for the class over the next five weeks. A couple of things about Flickr I want to recommend to you right now as we start. You should upload your photos to Flickr. If you don't plan on keeping your blog, you may really want to consider on putting all your photos in Flickr and then embedding them into your posts. When you archive your blog at the end of this five-week semester, it will make your life a million times easier. The other thing about Flickr is in order for us to follow your daily shoot, because all the daily shoots for DS106 will be pulled onto the DS106 site, in order for us that to happen, you have to have at least five public images on your Flickr account already. We've put that information in the pre-course information, but be sure that you have five public images in your Flickr account before you go live 
and take your first daily shoot. In summation, DS-106 is an experiment. It's an experiment in identity. It's an experiment about thinking through the idea of narrative as it pertains to various services and to this question of the digital. And that question of the digital in many ways does remain a question. Is digital storytelling that different from storytelling? How is it different? How might we interrogate that difference? But one of the huge questions we need to ask over the course of this semester is how does your participation within the creation of the narrative of this class, which can only be as great as a series of its parts, how does that very creation out in the open, where others can see and comment regularly on that work you do, change the dynamic whereby we think about what education could be. And whether or not education does necessarily depend upon a particular approach through a particular person, right? Crowdsourcing, networking, however you want to frame that idea of assignments, something you'll be asked regularly to do, is a part of thinking through what it might mean to not only build resources, but to share around those resources. One of the big questions on the web right now is, how do we get free resources? And more interesting to me than the question of getting free resources on the web, though that's very valuable, is how do we create a community of discussion, some sort of feedback loop, some sort of discourse around those resources? Because resources, that are outside the context of discussion, of thinking, and of interaction, lose all of their value. And for me, this course is as much about your process, is as much about your reflection, and as your ability to frame context for not only your readers, but for your own idea of what creating these assignments and going about this process of, immer of immersing yourself in the digital, what it means as a process. This is not very clear. One of the big issues, one of the big kind of philosophical statements, if you will, to kind of emerge since the 1960s, and we'll be hearing a lot about and from Marshall McLuhan, is this idea of the medium and how the medium isn't static. How, as much as we shape the tools and the medium itself, how much that medium at once also shapes us and who we are. There's a symbiotic relationship, often framed as parasitic, whereby the means through which we communicate, the means through which we express ourselves through these various media, in many ways, changes the nature of communication, changes the nature of expression. And so, if we took the long view and said all storytelling is the same, then in some ways we wouldn't be able to interrogate and to analyze quite specifically what the conditions of our communication and of our expression at this particular moment in history provide us a lens for thinking about who and what and where we are as a culture. The media is full of examples. I not only want you to think about those examples, but I want you to start creating your own examples. That is the way of DS-106. So, this has been an introduction with Dr. Brian Oblivion. I want to welcome you warmly to DS-106. This is a class that could, in many ways, change your conception of not only yourself as a creator, but I would argue as an artist. Welcome, and thank you for listening. DS-106 TV, for life.